The views expressed and the opinions given by the individual host and their guests do not necessarily reflect those of Para-X, its affiliates, or its sponsors. All these voices. everyone and welcome to another episode of staring into the abyss i am your host horror author james hershey jr and with me as always my co-host old boy james ash how you doing brother oh, i'm doing pretty good how is everybody tonight tonight i am going to make old boy a very very happy boy because we are going to be talking about one of his absolute favorite subjects he almost every week he wants to do a show about the megalodon shark and this week we're actually going to because we have an article here this article comes from the New York Post. It was written by James Rogers of Fox News, and it was published on September 4th, 2020. And the headline is, Scientists Reveal Prehistoric Giant Megalodons Astonishing True Scale. Researchers in the UK have revealed the true size of the megalodon, the prehistoric giant shark of Hollywood fame. Experts from the University of Bristol and Swansea University have shed new light on the giant megalodon, which is history's largest marine predator. While the modern great white shark can be over 20 feet long, the megalodon, which lived from 23 million to 3 million years ago, was over twice the length of a great white. Scientists can now reveal the size of the rest of the megalodon's body, including its huge fins. The researchers note that megalodon fossils are typically huge triangular teeth, larger than a human hand. Armed with data from these fossils, scientists use mathematical methods to ascertain the size and proportions of the megalodons. Comparisons were also made with the creature's living relatives. Megalodon is not a direct ancestor of the great white but is equally related to other macro-predatory sharks, such as the Makos, the Salmon Shark, and the Poor Beagle Shark, as well as the Great White, said Dr. Catalina Pimiento of Swansea University. I probably butchered that last name, and I apologize, who supervised the study in a statement. The Makos refer to the two subspecies of Mako Shark, the Short Fin and the Long Fin. Detailed measurements of the modern sharks were pulled to make predictions about the megalodon, Pimiento said. I'm just going to call her Pimiento. I hope, I hope that nobody minds, but, I mean, it looks like Pimiento, so that's much easier to say. So Dr. Pimiento said, Before we could do anything, we had to test whether these five modern sharks changed proportions as they grew up, added Professor Mike Benton, a paleontologist at the University of Bristol, in a statement. If, for example, they had been like humans, where babies having big heads and short legs we would have had some difficulties in projecting the adult proportions for such a huge extinct shark. But we were surprised and relieved to discover that, in fact, the babies of all of these modern predatory sharks start out as little adults, and they don't change in proportion as they get larger, he said. Researcher Jack Cooper, who recently completed his MSc in paleobiology at the University of Bristol, explained that the team was then able to work out the proportions of the megalodon. This means that we could simply take the growth curves of the five modern forms and project the overall shape as they get larger and larger, right up to a body length of 16 meters, which is 52 and a half feet, he said. A 52 and a half foot long megalodon likely had a head 15.3 feet long, a dorsal fin approximately 5.3 feet tall, and a tail around 12.6 feet high, the scientists found. This means an adult human could stand on the back of this shark and would be about the same height as the dorsal fin, they said in the statement. The research is published in the journal Scientific Reports, 
Earlier this year, a megalodon tooth as large as a human hand was found in South Carolina. Last year, megalodon teeth as well as teeth from several other species of shark were discovered in Mexico. And that is the end of the story. So 52 and a half feet, they're saying. That is one hell of a big shark. Now before, they would always say that the megalodon was the size of a school bus. Now I'm not exactly sure how long a school bus is. How long is a school bus? It says school buses range anywhere from 20 to 45 feet in length. So we're talking larger. So they thought a megalodon before, they thought it was 45 feet in length. And now we know, according to this, that it is actually larger than that. They're talking 52 and a half feet. So that is a very, very big shark. Now, one of the things I'd like to talk about tonight, not only is this amazing and very cool that now we have an updated length of the shark and all that, but they, multiple times they say that this shark is extinct. And I don't know for sure that the Megalodon actually is extinct. That's going to be, I think, probably the main focus of the show tonight is trying to figure out whether this shark still actually exists out there or not. There have been multiple sightings of what witnesses described as a Megalodon shark, that it was that big. They said that it was in excess of 40 feet long. So that is substantial. They have video footage that I have seen of a very, very, very big shark that is swimming up next to a boat. The shark looks to be bigger than the boat. Now this boat is like a, it's not like a John boat or something like that. It, it's a, almost like a shrimp boat, something like that. Like it's something that you would take out to, to fish. So it's not like a gigantic, huge boat, but it's not a little bitty boat either. And this shark that I saw in the water beside this boat was much larger than the boat. Does that mean it's a megalodon? Not necessarily, but it was very, very big. And as I said, there are multiple reports of people that have seen megalodon sharks that have said that they were way bigger than any shark they'd ever seen before. And these are people that are out on the ocean all the time. They see great whites. And this shark dwarfed the great whites, is what they say. Until we have a confirmed sighting of a megalodon to where there is a marine biologist somewhere that goes out and finds one of these things and catch, captures it close up on camera, you know, has good footage of it and can positively identify it. Until we have that, it's all speculation. So I want to make that very clear right from the beginning. I'm not coming out here and saying the megalodon still exists. But what I'm saying is it's possible because there are a lot of reports of people that have supposedly seen it. Could the Megalodon still exist? Well, absolutely, it could. There's no reason why it couldn't. Um, there's been a lot of marine species that scientists thought were either extinct or were just myths completely that turned out to be real. One great example of that is the coelophant. The coelophant supposedly went extinct hundreds and hundreds of thousands of years ago. And then one washed up on the coast of Madagascar they're still out there. So now we know that the coelophant is still around. It still exists. The giant squid, that is a creature that for the majority of my life was considered to be myth, that it did not exist. It was just something out of old sea stories, you know, out of the old legends where people would talk about the Kraken and talk about sea monsters that would take ships and crush them and sink them. Supposedly, didn't actually exist. Well, now we know that it does exist because we filmed it and we've seen it multiple times now and studied it. So we know that the giant squid is a reality. It exists 100%. That was something, once again, that most scientists said, nah, it don't exist. That's just a thing from legends. There is a lot of room in the ocean for a very, very large predatory shark. There's also plenty for that shark to eat. Because when you're talking about a shark that size, he's not going up and biting individual fish, probably. This is something that's going to be feeding on whales and stuff like that, most likely. Because this is a very large animal. And coincidentally, there have been whales that have washed up on shorelines that have huge bites out of them. And they've kind of left people puzzled because 
according to the bite that was taken out of the whale, from what I've read, no shark alive today is capable of producing a bite that size because it was so big. That's one of the reasons why people started speculating that the megalodon might still be out there somewhere. Because what is attacking these whales? Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be a megalodon that's doing it. It could be some other species of shark or fish or something that we just don't even have any idea exists. We have no idea what it is because we haven't found it yet. People have the misconception that we have discovered everything, that there's no place left that we haven't been and, and studied and everything has been discovered. And that's simply not the case. That's not the case on land. And that's not the case definitely in the ocean. Because even on land, we're still finding new species all the time. A great example of what I was talking about in the ocean with the squid and the coelophant is the silverback gorilla. That was an animal that was supposedly just a legend. It was a myth. It didn't actually exist. It was a monster that somebody had imagined. It was the, the figment of a tribe down in the Congo's imagination that these stupid savages couldn't explain what was going on, so they had to create a monster to explain it. That's kind of the dismissive way that a lot of scientists looked at the stories of the silverback gorilla until we actually found them. And now we know that it's a real animal, it exists, it lives down in the Congo, and we found it. But it was, once again, just myth. So there are a lot of cases of, of something where either the animal was supposed to be extinct or was a mythical kind of creature that it turns out actually exists. I think that's what we're going to find out with Nessie. I think Nessie is going to turn out to be some sort of of creature from a long, long time ago, an actual animal that has survived. And once we actually discover it and we say, oh, well, that's what it is, and it won't be a big deal anymore. I think the same thing is going to happen with Bigfoot. I think eventually somebody is going to bag a Bigfoot. There's going to be a body. Whether somebody shoots one or whether one is found dead, somehow we're going to end up with a body. And there's going to be definitive proof that Bigfoot exists. Now, I personally think that Bigfoot is Gigantopithecus. That's my personal theory on it. And I share that theory with a whole lot of people. But that's what I believe. But could be some other large primate type species. Who knows? I think that we're going to probably end up finding that out about the Tasmanian tiger as well. I think that that is something that people have said has gone extinct, but I think that quite possibly it really hasn't because there's been reports of people seeing them. I mean, we get, we get reports here in, in the mountains of Virginia about jaguars. Okay, now I'm not saying jaguars are a mythical animal. Of course, jaguars exist, 100%. That's obvious. But the mythical part here is everybody says they don't exist here anymore that they only exist down in South America. Well, at one time, jaguars did roam this area, but supposedly they were all killed off or whatever, and that's why they're not here anymore. But I have seen video footage from my area of large black cats. I'm not talking house cats. I'm talking the size of a cougar or bigger that is jet black, looks exactly like a jaguar, roaming around the mountains. So I'm pretty sure that they still exist here as well. And I think we're gonna find that exact same scenario with the Megalodon shark. Eventually we're gonna discover one of these. Uh, we're either gonna get a body or we're gonna really capture it on film in a very good way. Because there are cameras on a lot of these uh, deep drilling stations and stuff like that. Eventually we're gonna get footage of it. And when we do, we will learn that this thing still exists. Now, where could it exist? That's another question. Something that large probably wouldn't have too much trouble surviving deep in the ocean. So that's one solution to the problem of where they live. Because a shark that big, you would think that there would be some kind of sighting of it. But you gotta realize that we can lose an entire ship. I mean, you could have a giant boat out there and lose it and the power goes out on it and the engines die and it's stranded out in the ocean and it can drift for months before somebody finds it 
because the ocean is big as hell. And it's not like we're everywhere on the ocean all the time. That's why when, when there's shipwrecks and stuff like that, a lot of times they don't find the people. Even if the people survive for a long time afterwards and float around in a life raft or end up on an island, they don't find them. Because the ocean is very, very large and we have not mapped it all. Inside the ocean is even more mysterious. And the deeper you go, the more mysterious it gets. There's areas in the bottom of the ocean that we've only been to a couple times. And we haven't spent any real time there. And we haven't done any real research there. If you're talking the Mariana Trench, you've got to realize that is over six miles deep. We've only been there a few times. And you can only stay down there for a matter of minutes before you have to come up. Because the pressure is so intense that it'll literally crush your submarine like, a, like an aluminum can if you're down there too long. So it's possible that a species such as Megalodon could survive deeper in the ocean. Now, I'm not saying necessarily down in the Mariana Trench because the pressure you would think would have to affect it as well, right? But there are other deep areas of the ocean where this thing could live. And it could survive just like the giant squid did for a long time. It survives deeper in the ocean where we don't ordinarily go. And there you have it. And every once in a while, it comes up to feed and goes back down, maybe. Who knows? That's just a theory. Don't know for sure. As I said in the beginning, until we have a body, until we have really, really good footage, it's all speculation. But I honestly and truly believe that it is possible that this creature could still be around. There was one case of a great white shark that they found that had an enormous bite out of it. Damn near bit the thing in half. And people were freaking out saying, what could have done this? And they determined that it might be a megalodon, that the megalodon might still be around. So it's possible. So with that being said, I want to throw over to Old Boy, and I would like to get his opinion on, on all that I've talked about. And just basically whatever he wants to talk about as far as megalodon, because this is kind of his jam. He absolutely loves this. And I'm really looking forward to hearing what he has to say. So, old boy, go ahead, brother. The Megalodon is something I've been wanting to do for a couple of years, and we're finally getting to do it. I just sent him video of when they were doing oil uh, drilling. When he get when I'm done talking, he can look at the video while we're talking right now of them getting an unidentified giant shark that they said scientists have already looked. Is in Japan. They have video of it. I sent it over to him. You could see it's a giant shark. They were, I guess, they were down there fixing some and the oil down there. And I've seen it in Mexico too. Mexico, they had they have the the fin, but this one it actually shows a giant shark. They're saying that, that I've seen this video already, and I've seen it when we came on it. They said that they're saying scientists are saying it could be sixty feet long. And after I'm done talking in a little bit, James can look at that video right now. I sent him, and that's a real video. They said the giant squid didn't exist, and it does now. The, the sealer fan, like he was talking about, it does exist. I've seen videos of sharks getting bit, whales getting bite marks on them, uh, sharks, great whites getting bit in half. There's probably nothing else that could do that unless it's some kind of other monster. It can, that could be a possibility because they've been talking about sea serpents for thousands of years. So it could be one of those, too, because, you know, we, they've been saying that they just got another sighting. And this is nothing new about the Megalodon is I think it was in London that they keep seeing this unidentified 60 foot looking snake looking serpent. And there's been a bunch of sightings now in this populated area, because you got to remember now that the world's get changing. It's getting hotter. The climate's changing. There's a lot more people in the world. And things are starting to come out like the sh like you see on TV, the great whites and regular sharks are biting people and coming on sh uh, land where they never came before. Shallow water is up to what, three feet, sometimes around two feet. I've been hearing they're attacking people. I believe the Megalodon exists. It, it did exist at one time. It does. People just think it is extinct. So it did exist. Let's not say this thing didn't. It did. We didn't know it was this big. 
And they were saying an average of 52 and a half feet. There's probably some that gets around 60 or bigger. So you're talking about something that's bigger than a bus. And I'm going to tell you something. If that's true, man, <laughs> uh, I would like if you ever seen the 58 footers, like the motorhomes, it's big. It's about big as that. That's crazy. Or like a diesel, like something big as a diesel truck floating in the water. And people said they see it. Now, that video shows that this thing's huge. It's bigger than that. And, the, and the, I guess where the pipe was and the fence was like 20 feet wide. It's huge. It's bigger than that. And then you guys all seen the Jaws movies. You know, that's where they got the, the that that whole uh, thing from that. The, you know, it's a popular story. They even they have knocked off B movies like the Megalodon versus the three-headed uh, shark and all kinds of stuff on sci-fi. You know, you see a lot about the Megalodon. And then uh, what's the other one? There's another shark movie. Deep Blue, uh, a couple other ones that came out. Um, God, I forget the other one. It had Jason, uh, what's his statement, I think it is, and he was fighting this big old giant shark. It's supposed to be a megalodon. I don't know if you, I forget the name of it. God, it was, just came out like last year. But uh, I watched that. That was pretty cool too. But if these things exist, and I think they do still, I think there's something bigger than that that eats these things. Because like he was saying, talking about the trench he's talking about, what they said you could put, uh, I think, uh, what's that mountain? Mount Everest in there. And still, it'd only be thirty another 30,000 feet to go. That's how deep this thing is. So we don't know what's down there. And they have sonar that they had one thing from one side of the ocean to the other at, at the same time. We don't know what's in this, these, these waters. 90% of the, of the population is water. That's what people don't get. We haven't seen everything. And we haven't seen all the water. Maybe 15% of what's there we know of. Just like space, maybe 1%, maybe, maybe, less than that. We don't know everything. This is what, what irritates me because people think they know everything and they don't. It's virtually impossible to know everything. It's, it's impossible. We're never going to know everything, especially with space. We're never going to know everything. We'll know more. You'll keep learning, but it's impossible because we're going to learn something new every day. And to have that idea that none of this stuff exists, what really irritates me, because I get it. People want to be famous. People fake things. It happens all the time. I'm in the paranormal world. I deal with that a lot. A lot of fake stuff. But there's something there, just like there's something with L Nessie, Bigfoot, the Megalodon, the giant squid exist, and they proved it now. And they didn't know about that for years. They're even saying the Tasmanian tiger might be not extinct anymore because it supposedly got extinct in, I think, in the 40s. And they're seeing that they might have it now. Just like they're saying the Chupacabra, it, it's... Um, it's a well. I don't know. There's an argument about it, but they're saying a coyote and a wolf have inbreeding, and they made it, and that's what it is. It's like a mutate, mutated dog. I believe that, but I don't believe that's what the cheaper covered. I think that's a whole different story. I think they're using that as a scapegoat. These things exist. Not everything does, but these things exist. There's there's footage now of the megalodon. If it is the megalodon, maybe it's a different species of shark. We don't know. Maybe it's a cousin of the megalodon. I don't think it's exactly the megalodon. Maybe it's something bigger. Maybe it's the super megalodon or the megalo megalodash. I'm just make, being funny, guys. But, you know, maybe it's another kind of shark we don't even know about. These sharks get huge. There's sharks bigger than the, and the great whites. The whale shark's bigger. There's another one that they just found out the new speed. That weird looking nose on it's bigger than a great white. There's bigger sharks. Killer whales are bigger. But there's bigger things in the ocean than what I think you see. We didn't, like the squid, that thing's there. They talk about the kraken for years. Thousands of years they've been talking about these things. You know, like with dragons, people didn't believe that. And look, I, I have my opinions. I think maybe they were a dinosaur. It was a dinosaur. And that's what they're mixing up with a dragon. Because I don't think dinosaurs are 100% distinct. I believe there's stuff we just don't, we'll never know. And they ain't going to ever tell you because they don't want people to know this stuff. 
Now, the Megalodon something that they're not going to really make a big deal about. If it, they find out it's real, the only thing I'm going to tell you now, you need to be worried about when you go in the ocean. I, I don't think these things are going to attack a human because I don't think they were going to care. Because they're going to look for something bigger. We're not going to be advertising. They're huge. But that will tell you something. What else is in that ocean? And I don't want to know. I'll tell you right now. I'm not scared of a lot of things. I'm not scared of the ocean, but I don't like being in water. Big giant lakes, because I'm worried about what's in those lakes. I'm not scared of anything, but when you can't, you're in the water, you have no way of defending yourself. Unless you're on a boat, then if the thing's bigger than the boat, it's going to knock you over. I've heard stories of people, encounters with these things. And not just a megalodon with, like, well, uh, supposedly like a wannabe uh, Nessie guy. I was reading a story about this at this creature was in a lake. He was in a little pontoon boat fishing, and he said he saw this thing with a with it was it was like a snake look face, but it was huge. It was sixty feet long, and he said this thing looked at him and came closer closer to his boat, and he kept rowing away. So he sat there for like five or six hours. He finally got it. Finally left him alone. He said it looked like a snake, but it had like a dog's face. There's weird stuff that go in these waters, man. I'm telling you. There's been too many sightings, especially of Megalodon. It's just people, I think, are afraid if that's in there. Why would you be afraid? There's giant things in the ocean. That just, just another thing that's going to be there. At least we're not living like in the prehistoric days. There were some monsters. There were some nightmares. There, you, you thought the Megalodon was bad. There's other things that you had to worry about. The plesiosaurs. Other things uh, you, you just didn't want to deal with. They were nightmares. And I'm telling you, I'm glad we don't live in these days anymore. Imagine having these things running around in the ocean and, and in the sky and dinosaurs running around. Dude, we probably would have been gone. We've been, we wouldn't even have survived. Maybe that's why we, we out that they were meant to die because we would have never survived. They would have wiped us out. Back then, they would have, we wouldn't have had the technology. I believe we got our technology from other places too. So we don't want to get into that. That has nothing to do with the Megalodon. But that's what I'm saying. But this is like want, the thing I've been wanting to do for a while. I love the, the shark. I, I've always have. I love giant creatures. I like, I, I, I've always have. Jaws, I like the first one, and the second one was cool. After that, I was kind of getting, eh, you know, how with sequels kind of gets annoying. But that made me never want to go in the ocean, I'll be honest with you, because a shark that big coming at you, there, you ain't going to win. I don't care what you know, unless you have like a, uh, you know, a hundred foot boat or something. That's a different story, and that probably could take it out. So I wanted, wanted to do this show for a while, guys, and I'm glad we got to do it. Giant, giant shark. And there's some monsters out there, and I really believe this, and I believe they exist. And if I was you guys, just remember, if you're out in the ocean, if you're out in a boat, or you're even in um, the lake, remember, always keep an eye out on stuff. And people, like I see, they go well washing. Wells are not going to attack you, but sometimes you can't know when they're going to jump. And they can knock your boat over. You, you know, some of these blue wells get 80, 90 feet long, even 100. Uh, those things, uh, you know, they want to, they'll knock you over. They, they could just, me they can mess you up. And I'm just going to tell you, the one thing I'm worried about, if Megalodons do exist, that they're going to make a game out of it, like they did with Killer Wells. And try to, <laughs> you can't, you can't train Great Whites. Like you can't, like you can with Killer, killer Wells. Megalodons are not our friends. They're natural killing machines. They're predators. I'm not going to go jump in the water, 60-foot giant, that could eat me in one, one bite. I'm going to tell you, like, getting bit by giant swords as their teeth, that they just, and James will agree with me, he doesn't like the water too much either. It, it just, that's why. And so pretty much, I hope you guys enjoyed this one so he could talk a little bit more about it. But I'm glad we got to do this show. Been wanting to do it for a while. Thank you, guys. Okay, I watched the video that old boy sent me. And if you are on the YouTube channel right now watching the replay of this radio show, right now, 
on the screen, instead of the staring logo, you're going to be watching this video. If you're listening to this show on the radio, go over to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash James Hershey Jr. Find the replay for this show. It'll be the latest video and check it out. You can see it for yourself. Now, the title of this YouTube video is Megalodon Shark Caught on Camera by J Japan Scientist. As you look at this video, you can see that if you know anything about sharks, this is not a Megalodon Shark. It can't be. A Megalodon Shark is going to look way more like a Great White, just a lot bigger. It's going to be a lot more angled, a lot sharper features. This, notice the roundness of the head. Notice the roundness of the fins. This is a sleeper shark. Most likely, it is either a Pacific sleeper or probably a Greenland shark, if I had to guess, is what this is. I sent Old Boy a picture, a link to a picture of a Greenland shark that he can look at. That's what this particular shark is. It is big as hell. Don't get me wrong. It's a big shark. But that is not a Megalodon shark. That's, this is like a, one of those clickbait videos, I think. It's where they, they write Megalodon shark caught on camera and it makes you click it to see, oh my god, i got to see this shark, and then it's not. It, this is a Greenland shark. But it would be extremely cool to see some video of a Megalodon shark. So if you're listening to this episode, and if you know of any video or any pictures that exist of the actual shark, let us know down in the comments and put a link if you got one to the video or to the pictures or whatever. And we'll check it out and, and take a look. But yeah, this is something that I do believe is possible. Because there have been a lot of reports of people that have seen them. And there have been reports of, of uh, like boats being taken down and stuff. I mean, you got the the black demon shark in the Sea of Cortez that people talk about. Okay, now that, that might be a megalodon or it might be a different large shark that was supposedly extinct. It might have been like the Ginsu shark, for example. That is a shark that supposedly went extinct. It's a little bit smaller. It's They say it should be around 35 feet long, but it would almost perfectly match the description of the black demon shark of the Sea of Cortez. So that's a possibility, is that shark might still be out there. We have no idea. I mean, you might say, well, come on, man, a shark that existed way back then and now he's around, it's not possible, but look at the frill shark. The frill shark is a great example. That shark supposedly was extinct. It was a prehistoric shark that was supposedly extinct for tons and tons of years, okay? And then all of a sudden, oh, we found one alive. About two years ago, we found the frill shark. It exists. But if you would have said the day before they found it, if you would have said, you know, the frill shark might still be around, then different scientists and people that, that study sharks would say, dude, you're out of your damn mind. That's a prehistoric shark. It can't it can't still be around. Because they say that during prehistoric times, the ocean temperature was different than it is now. Uh, the oxygen levels in the air were definitely different. There was a lot more oxygen, so there might have been more oxygen in the water as well. So could a prehistoric shark even survive now? That's kind of the argument you get. Well, we see from the frill shark that, yeah, it, it could. I mean, look at the modern bull shark. The modern bull shark is an amazing creature. Okay, this is a shark that lives in the ocean. Now you might say, duh, of course it lives in the ocean, dummy. Where the hell else would it live? It's a shark. But check this out. The bull shark can also live in fresh water. Doesn't have to be in salt water of the ocean. It can leave the ocean and go into river systems and survive long term as long as it wants to in the rivers you had exactly those kind of cases happen before you had bull shark that came down and entered the river system 
And there was all kinds of shark attacks that were happening in the river around New Jersey, New York, and, and on down the river. And this went on for weeks and weeks and weeks as this bull shark made his way down the river. There is absolutely nothing stopping a shark from coming right on into the river. There's no physical barrier that's going to stop them. Creeks lead to rivers. Rivers lead to bigger rivers. Everything empties into the ocean eventually. At that point where it empties into the ocean, you could have sharks come in. Now, your normal shark is not going to hang out in fresh water very long. It might come in for a little bit and leave. It has to be in salt water in order for it to properly survive. But not the bull shark. The bull shark is a next level badass. The bull shark could live anywhere it wants. So it could go hang out in your river and you could go out in your town and be like, hey, I'm going to go to the river today and swim. And you could be swimming in the river a hundred miles away from the ocean and have no inkling of an idea that, that there's a shark in the water with you. But there's a bull shark there and he's about to bite you. Because bull sharks will eat anything. They don't give a damn if you're a person. They don't give a damn if you're a fish. They don't care if you're a dog. They don't care what you are. If they're hungry, they're going to take a bite. And they're always hungry. So the bull shark can survive in multiple environments. So if we have a shark today that could do it, what makes us think that sharks from prehistoric times couldn't adjust to a little difference in temperature? I mean, a little difference in temperature, in my mind, is not as big a deal as going from salt water to fresh water. That's a big deal. If you don't think that's a big deal, then go to the aquarium store, the pet store, and buy yourself some tropical fish that have to live in salt water. Take them home and put them in your goldfish tank and see what happens. Now, the first thing that you'll probably do is cuss me because tropical fish cost a lot of money. And you have just wasted a bunch of it because you just spent a lot of money on a fish that you just killed. Because that fish is not going to survive in fresh water. They need salt water. The bull shark can. The temperature difference can be overcome. You can learn this by a trip to the aquarium as well. Because when you buy even goldfish, any kind of fish from the aquarium, they put them in a plastic bag full of water from the tank. And you take them fish home. Now, what you're supposed to do when you get home, which probably most people don't do, but what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to take that bag and you're supposed to sit it in your water of your fish tank. Not dump the bag into your fish tank, but actually sit the, the bag while it's still tied up and sealed inside the water of your, your fish tank and let it sit there for about 15 minutes. What you're doing is you are acclimatizing that fish to the temperature of your water. Fish can regulate their temperature like that. They can get used to a little bit of difference in temperature. So it's not the end of the world. So to think that a prehistoric fish couldn't live in modern water because it's, there's a temperature difference is silly. Because you have to think that that water changed temperature over time. It's the exact same as taking a megalodon, putting it in one hell of a big giant plastic bag and sitting it inside water to acclimatize. It's the same thing. It had a lot of time to get used to the water slowly getting warmer or slowly getting colder, whatever the case may be, depending on what part of the ocean you're in. It had the time to get used to it because it happened very slowly. So it's not like you take a, a megalodon out of the water of the prehistoric times and throw it into the water of today, and there's this huge temperature difference. It, that's not how it happened. It happened over time. So it slowly changed. So it slowly got used to it and probably evolved to live in the better water. So you got to think, think about that when you, 
when you make that statement. So I don't see any reason why there could not be a Megalodon shark. We have sleeper sharks. We have the Greenland shark. We have the Pacific sleeper shark. We have all kinds of sharks like that. We have the whale shark. These sharks are gigantic. So the idea that you can't have something that big is crazy. We have whales. Sperm whales, blue whales. These things are a couple hundred feet long. They are humongous. There's absolutely no reason why if there are whales that large in the ocean that survived, why there couldn't be a predatory shark that is 60 feet long that survived. It could eat whale. It is fully capable of attacking a whale. That is a very good food source. It could eat other large sharks if it wanted to. Basically, a megalodon could eat whatever the hell it wants. I mean, there's not a whole lot of things in the ocean that are going to stop it from having a snack if it wants to have a snack. Because that's one gigantic, badass shark. So it's not like there's anything that it can't feed on if it wants to. And I think that it might be responsible for some of the the shipwrecks and the, the boats that have went down and stuff in recent time. Because we have reports of, of different ships that have been very badly damaged and sunk. And there's nobody has any idea what happened to them. What if part of the reason why there are disappearances of ships in different areas of the ocean is because there are, is a large predatory shark that likes to crash them? Maybe, maybe not. I'm not saying that that would be number one on the Megalodon's list of things to do, but if you're a 60-foot shark cruising around and you see a 30-foot boat buzzing around and making noise and annoying you, why wouldn't you ram it and just sink the damn thing? It's, it would be fully capable, right? Just a thought. Not saying that that's a definite thing. I'm not saying that every ship that goes down is something that got attacked by a shark because that's silly. But it's possible. It could happen. So I'm going to throw back over to old boy and get his opinion on the picture that I sent him and then let him do his uh, final sum up and all that. So old boy, go ahead, brother. I saw the picture. The thing is, I seen the actual video. I've seen them actually bring the video out of them. It wasn't just bait. I've actually seen them talk about this on TV. They don't know what it is. They already said they don't know exactly what that was. So it could be a green shark. It could be a whale shark, but they were saying there's there was something about it. It doesn't it looks different than what these it's just bigger than what a Greenland would be. The shark was huge. Whatever it was, I believe there's other pictures. There's, there's one in Mexico where they have one where they shows a giant fin. It was huge. The fin's huge. It's just really big. There's another one. And it shows the back of the fin, uh, the tail. And it's just, it's huge. They said it was 60 feet. It could be around 60 feet. So I hope you guys enjoyed the show. I've been wanting to do this one for a while. And we finally got an excuse to do it because, you know, honestly, I wanted something to bring it up because we were just going to talk about the giant, you know, Jaws. But now we actually had to go with a new story. It just came out because they're just talking about this, about how big they are. And other pictures have been taken and people have been talking about the Megalodon because a lot of people believe it, it, it exists. It's still it's not extinct. And I'm one of these people. And I think James is another one. Do I believe that they are real? Yes, they were 100% real. Do I believe they exist? Yes, 99% they exist. Do I believe half the videos? No, probably about 15% of those. I also think it's amazing how big they are. It's great to know the actual size of these things are bigger than I thought. So these guys were, these were badass fish. They're, they're awesome. Um, you probably didn't have too many rivals. Except a few of there were some giant, giant, bigger things than that. So back in dinosaur days, millions of years ago. So I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Uh, leave your comments. Tell me what you guys think. Tell me if you've seen anything in the lakes. 
oceans? Have you ever had your encounters? Just let us know. Tell us what your feedback is. Tell us what you think about this. Tell me if you think they're they're gone and people are just crazy. Or tell me if you've seen some or you believe it. We would love to hear your feedback. We always love hearing feedback. So that being said, I, I, I want to thank our Parax fans for listening to us every week. This is our, our third year on Parax. It's going to be, I think January, it's going to be four years we've been doing Staring in the Abyss. God, it's gone fast. So you guys want to listen to all our old shows or new shows on Star- on James Hershey duh. on James Hershey's YouTube page. Check it out. Subscribe. There's all kinds of content we're doing on there. Side shows, paranormal news, video game uh, stuff. We like video. We're big Xbox fan, Xbox fans and Nintendo Switch fans. So you guys, you can see what we're doing. Mostly Xbox stuff, oh guys. And the new Xbox X is coming out. So we're probably probably going to get one so we'll probably be showing you all that stuff too when it comes out so there's some cool games coming out so um you guys want to check out our merch store he's going to tell you what to get shirts uh covert 19 mask cups blankets um iphone cases all kinds of stuff baby clothes so just check uh check it out uh see if you guys like it um and see if you want anything let us know you want something specially made we'll make it for you guys uh i'm want to announce i just had my grandson a couple weeks ago so i want to give a shout out to him and um i hope you guys have a great night misfits sugar ladies monster hunters and demon lovers i love you and blessed be and have a great night yeah i saw that that picture that you're talking about from mexico that's impressive i don't know what the hell that is that is one hell of a big shark whatever that was and like I said, I, I'm 100% a believer that the Megalodon is still out there. I think that there are too many sightings and too many things that I can't explain away by any other method. Now, I'm not 100% sure that it is Megalodon. Maybe it's some other large prehistoric shark. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be Megalodon, but Megalodon would be really cool because that's like the coolest shark ever, I think. But the thing I was saying about the video is it's, for me, it was all in the angles of, of the head. Because if you look at the the Megalodon, it looked a lot more like a great white does today. It had a lot sharper features and it was a lot more streamlined where that shark was kind of fat and looked like, the best way to describe it is when you look at a great white's mouth, it's scary looking right? It's a predator. It, it has rows of teeth and it's sharp looking and it's, ah, but like this, the Greenland shark and the, and the sleeper sharks, they look like an old grandpa who lost all his teeth. You know how when somebody don't have any teeth, they have that, that softer face to where it's just kind of slumped down. That's kind of what these sharks look like. So there's a big difference in the shape of the head and the fins on a great white or a megalodon are going to be sharper. They're going to come to point where the fins on a sleeper shark are more rounded. And this thing had rounded fins in the video. So that to me, that is the, where I made my determination of what I thought it was, was based on those characteristics of the shark. Cause unfortunately the, the camera is up really, really close to the shark so it's not like you get a good view of the entire animal out away from the camera you know the camera's up on it so you have to deal with what you got but there have absolutely been pictures and some footage out there that makes me believe that the megalodon might still be around and in a way i kind of hope that it is because that is a badass shark and i love sharks i think sharks are fascinating Growing up, my absolute favorite shark ever was the hammerhead, just because I love the way its head looks. It's so cool looking. So if the apex predator of sharks, in in my mind, is still out there, that's just a great story to me. I mean, that's just the coolest thing ever. But as Old Boy said, um, you can catch the video here for the replay for this show on the YouTube channel. The YouTube channel is youtube.com slash James Hershey Jr. Every replay of the radio show goes on to that channel. We also have the TV show that we do, Tales from the Abyss, is on there. 
we do uh, paranormal news videos where we take different articles from the news that have to do with the paranormal and weird and wacky stuff too, you know, just very strange and weird articles. And we present those and, and comment on them a little bit. Um, and I also do like gameplay stuff on there because I'm a, I'm a, I'm what they call an OG. Okay. And that's not original gangster. That's original gamer. I started with Pong, not Atari, Pong. Like when Pong was the system, you hooked it up to your TV and all it was was Pong. Then I had the Atari 2600. I had the Atari 7800. I bought the first Nintendo, the Nintendo Entertainment System. Then I bought the Super Nintendo and the Sega Genesis. And then I had the PlayStation, the PlayStation 2. Then I went to the Xbox 360 and now I'm on the Xbox One and I'm going to be buying the new Xbox when it comes out. So my entire life I've had video games and played video games. It's one of my favorite things in the world to do. I absolutely love it. And I started putting some of that on the channel as well because we only do one show a week, like one radio show a week. So I wanted to fill a little bit of extra time. We were doing a lot of filming for the TV show and, and all that kind of stuff. But when all of this virus stuff happened and we all got locked down for a while, it was like we couldn't film. We still can't really go out and film. So... I had to do something to fill my time and to, and to fill time on the channel. So I decided to do that. And I'm, I'm very happy I did because I'm having a hell of a lot of fun doing it. So if you guys like video games, please go to the channel and check that out. Uh, it, even if you don't like video games, you get to hang out with me for a while. You get to, to see me outside of this show. Because on this show, I'm extremely serious and studious. And it's, it's like the old show Dragnet. Just the facts, ma'am. You know, I'm just giving you the information and I'm teaching you and we're learning together and it's a beautiful thing. But there you get to see me in a whole different way because I'm just cutting up and having a good time. And I'm not very serious at all when I'm playing games because that's my downtime where I get to have fun. And so you just get to hang out with me for a while and spend some time, which is always fun and great. So thank you guys for watching. Um, the merchandise store is teespring.com slash stores slash staring into the abyss. That's T E S P R I N G dot com slash stores with an S on the end slash staring into the abyss. That's where all the merch is. There's tons of stuff there. I was looking at the store yesterday. There's new stuff available. I can now make, and I'm excited about this. I'm kind of a nerd. I'll admit it, but I'm excited about this. I can now make pet clothes. How cool is that? I can make like little hoodies for dogs and cats. So I'm going to be, I'm going to make some of those with like the staring logo on it. And I'm going to come up with all kinds of different cool ideas for that. Cause that kind of cracks me up. I love that idea. Um, I'm going to be making more merchandise for the store soon. A bunch of different shirts, a bunch of different products, all kinds of different designs. There's a lot more there than just the staring logo we have all kinds of horror themed stuff we have all kinds of paranormal themed stuff there's all kinds of cool stuff there so if you're into merch and you want to support the show that is a great way to do it and like i said there's all kinds of different stuff there for you to get i try to keep everything as reasonable as i can price wise they have a suggested price that they want me to charge but i never charge that i usually go right down around where my cost is so if it costs me ten dollars to make something, I'm going to charge you twelve. You know what I mean? I'm. It's going to be very, very reasonable. Now the, the suggested retail for that same item that I'm going to charge you twelve for is going to be twenty-five. Is what they want me to sell it for. But I'd never sell it for the price they want. It's always a lot less because I'm not really concerned about making a ton of money off the thing. It's mainly for just getting the merch out there to people that want it. Because we had some people that wanted some merch. Um, as Old Boy mentioned, we have the COVID mask now. I did that because I was able to partner with a really cool charity that feeds kids here in America. And so when you buy the mask off the site, any of the masks you want to buy, 100% of that profit is going towards feeding those kids. So we're not making anything off those. Those are just being sold 
to give that money to the charity. They automatically get it. I don't even get it. It goes straight to them. So you can support the show. You can get yourself some merch. And you can feed some kids at the same time. And that's a great idea, you know. So once again, thank you for watching. Thank you for all your support. If you're listening on the radio, thank you for listening. I love you guys. And we just honestly appreciate everything that we're able to do because of you, you know. If it wasn't for all of you listening on the radio, we would not be doing this. I mean, I'm sure we still would be doing it because we love to do it, but it wouldn't be going out to like 40 countries or whatever. Let's put it that way. And the YouTube channel started off as a place to just kind of put shows as a replay so that if you missed it on the radio, you could go see it. And it's evolving into its own thing to where there's all kinds of content there now. So if you're somebody that likes to listen on the radio, please go check out the YouTube channel. Because you can also catch all the shows on the YouTube channel. But you can also watch the paranormal news videos, the TV show we do, Tales from the Abyss, where we're actually out hunting these things and, and doing investigations and helping families and all that. There's gameplay stuff there. There's paranormal news videos. There's just a ton of knowledge and a ton of fun on that channel now. And it's only going to keep getting bigger. Because I have all these ideas of stuff that I would like to do. I honestly have more things to do than I have time to do them in. So now it's just kind of a matter of trying to make the time to actually get some of it done. Because there's, I'm doing so much now. But it's a hell of a lot of fun. So thank you for all your support. And until I speak to you again, love many, trust few, and do harm to none. God loves you. So do we. Bye-bye.